mothers in the waiting room. This morning as you sit there, I want, want to ask you to consider the life of your child. Don't close your heart and your mind to the fact that your baby is alive. God's Word says that your baby was created in the image and likeness of God. A beating heart, brain waves by the time most of the babies are killed here today. Alive just like you. You know, regardless of the situation surrounding the conception of your baby, it might not have been ideal in, in, your, in your mind according to your plans. But the fact is, that baby is alive and does not deserve to be killed. That baby's done nothing against you. That baby hasn't attacked you. That baby's not your enemy. And the natural impulse of a mom should be from her heart to love her child and rejoice over the fact that there's life within her. Don't believe the lies that it's a bad thing to love and protect your child. It's only good. And it's only evil to consider and go through with the death of your child. You know, God's Word says in Proverbs chapter 6 that God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. It's not a small thing when God says He hates something. He doesn't say He's slightly upset with it, a little myth. But God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. And we know there's no one more innocent than the babies who die here today. They've done no wrong against you. You know, the Word of God also says to us today that it's appointed to every man and woman wants to die. And every one of us dies. Most of us die sooner than we expect. And just as sure as our death, it goes on to say, and after that, after our death, the judgment. Every human being that's walked the face of this earth, who's passed away, has stood before God in judgment. And given account for all their choices. All the bad things they decided to do. And rejecting what God has to say. The God who gives them life. The God who gives them breath. Shaking their fists in His face. Choosing to go their own way. And it always leads to death. Moms, here you are. Perfect example. Going our own way. Living lives that aren't moral. That aren't clean. And we end up in an abortion clinic where a baby has to pay the price for our sin. But here's the bottom line. That doesn't have to be you today. If no one else walks out of this place and has mercy and shows compassion on their baby, please let it be you that does that. Only good will follow. Regardless of the sacrifices you'll have to make, it's only good to have mercy on a child. You know, it's natural for you to love your baby. I want to encourage you not to harden your heart to your child. <coughs> if you need help, there's help available. Whatever you need. Whatever factors have led to you to decide that killing your baby is the best option let us know what those things are. We'll help solve each of those problems, meet each of those needs. So there'll be no reason left to take your baby's life. And you'll be left able to rejoice in the fact that you gave your baby life. The hundreds of women over the years as we ministered at these clinics have chosen life. Not one has shown regret over that decision. Every one of them are living joyful lives, loving their precious child. And not with the guilt of having shed the innocent blood of their baby. And that guilt doesn't go away. It doesn't go away with time. If you sin now against God by murdering your preborn child, that child created in God's image and likeness, if you live for another 70 years, before you stand before a holy God in judgment, that guilt will be just as fresh then as it is now. God keeps good books. God is just. God is also merciful. God offers mercy 
If there's repentance, many people speak about repentance but not even knowing what that means. And most think it means I'll kill my baby, I'll do wrong, and then I'll just say I'm sorry and God will be like, oh, it's alright, no big deal. But God's Word defines repentance. It's doing a 180. It's turning from the way we're walking. It's taking ownership of our sin, acknowledging that we're rebels. We're criminals in God's sight. Begging God for mercy. And then choosing by His grace and by His power, which He does give to those who are humble, to live otherwise. To live in a way that's pleasing to God, in obedience to His commands, by His power and strength. That's repentance. Not presumptuous sins and confession of, I've done wrong and walking away and continuing a rebellious lifestyle. It's a change. And what I want to encourage you with today is don't wait till your baby's blood is shed before you start considering these things. Don't heap sin upon sin and stack up the guilt and that wall of separation that's between you and the God who gave His Son for a sinful world who gives you life, who gives you breath. I want to encourage you to turn to Him now and ask Him for that strength now to do what is right now. God's Word says today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. In the book of Romans, we read about how those who continue in their rebellion and continue to walk in sin, and it speaks of God Himself giving us over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are sinful, which are evil. We come to a place where we don't know the difference between good and evil, where we actually think taking a baby's life in our situation could be a good thing. But God's Word still says we shall not murder. No plan B. No option B. We first have to take the murder of our child off the table. <clears throat> if you need help, let us help you. But don't let that be a consideration. Why should your baby have to die for your mistakes? And why should you live with that weight of guilt for the rest of your life because you shed the blood of a child. And I would even say a child who loves you. A child who's completely dependent on you. Warm, snug within your womb. No expectation that the mother that gave that child breath and life is now planning to take his life. Miss, we're a local ministry offering free help and support if you're pregnant. I want to encourage you to come talk with us. You know, you don't have to live with the guilt of having shed the innocent blood of your baby. God's Word says to you this morning, you shall not murder. And you've got it within you to do what is right. And if you need help, let us help you. Ma'am, I've spoken to the justice of God, the mercy of God, the love of God, but you know, God also hates some things. God hates the feet that are swift to shed innocent blood, that set their mind to do evil and harden their heart to any other thoughts or any other plans to do what is right and says, no, I will kill my baby. I'll close my ears, I'll harden my heart, and I'll set my mind to kill my child. And ma'am, as a worker here, I would encourage you to do what is right. You may think you're doing some good deed for women, but the bottom line is, you are walking in rebellion against the holy God who's given you clear commandment that you shall not murder. And the death of the preborn, the innocent, the shedding of innocent blood is clearly defined in the Word of God as murder. Surely you have some office training, something that you could do, use 
to find employment that benefits people, that helps women. Don't deceive yourself in thinking that you're honoring and protecting women when you're involved with the death of their own child. Every one of us will stand naked and trembling before a holy God one day, whether we like it or not, whether we believe it or not, whether you think it's just a myth or fable. You still have your day when you will stand before God and have to answer for all your choices. And I'd rather see you humble yourself now. Divorce yourself from that pride and that arrogance. Humble yourself before that God before that day. And God will offer mercy. But don't think His mercy overrides His justice or His justice overrides His mercy. God is both just and merciful. You must turn from your rebellion. You must acknowledge your sin. And moms, I want to encourage you to leave before it's too late. The bottom line is right now, we on the street are the best friends you have here. We're willing to tell you the truth. We're willing to do whatever is necessary to help you in your situation. Talk with us. We care about you. My name is Denny. I'm here for you. You don't have to hurt your baby. You don't have to pay someone to tear the arms and legs from your baby's body. To crush your baby's skull with a vacuum machine. I'd encourage you to go online on your phone and look at the abortion procedure and see what it does to that child. That child that you should love. That child who the Bible describes as a gift, a blessing, a heritage. A baby is only good. It's a good gift. Love your baby, moms. Leave before it's too late.